Hello and welcome. In the next few videos, we'll be looking at some of the tricks that I found particularly useful in the making of this music video. Now for this specific video, we'll be looking at how to make the geometry of the speakers react to the audio. Now this approach won't be particularly realistic, but I really like the kind of playful and stylized look that the whole uh, effect has. So without further ado, let's just jump into Blender and see how to set this up. Now, if you don't want to have to do this from scratch, you can grab a free blend file from my Gumroad with this speaker and you can just dissect that and see how it's built from the inside out. So inside my project file, I will select the speaker and then go to the modifiers tab. I already have some two modifiers set up and I'm going to add a displace modifier right there. And you will see it affects uh, the whole mesh and that's not what we really want. So I'll add a new texture and just call this speaker this. Placement. And then I'll go into the that texture, set it to clouds, and then adjust the size until I have something I like. I'll also go back into the modifier and adjust the strength so that it's not looking too crazy. I also want to make sure that it's displacing in the direction I want. So something like that. And then the next thing we want to do is limit the area that the displacement texture influences on the mesh. And we'll just do that by going to weight paint. And then I'll make sure I'm aligned properly and set my brush to roughly almost the radius of the speaker. And then with the weight set to, let's see, with the strength set to one, that uh, with the weight set to one, I'll just paint from the center of that speaker. And this is just to tell Blender the specific parts of the speaker that you want to be influenced by that displacement. So I'll just do something like that. Go back into the object mode. And then under the modifiers, if you select this vertex group, you'll see this new option here. Set that to group. And if you want to name it, you, you can come there and give it, let's say, speaker displacement. Okay, something weird is happening. Let me investigate. Oh yeah, since I renamed it, the modifier lost it. So I can just come here and set that again. And you'll see the displacement only influences the central part of the speaker, which is what we want. And you can play around with the strength and you'll see what happens. So with that displacement on the speaker set, the next thing we want to do is to animate it. So the idea is if you look at a vibrating speaker, the way I describe it is kind of rhythmic chaos. It vibrates aggressively uh, when, when, especially when playing the bass. And then it's only triggered by some sonic events in the audio that you're using. So the first thing I want to do is emulate that vibration. And then using the audio, we can use the signals in the audio to play around with the strength. So essentially, the animation underneath is will always be happening. The displacement will, will always be happening. But then we'll be playing with the strength to play around with when the viewer sees the displacement and not. And then that, that coupled with the rhythm of the audio gives that illusion of the speaker bumping to the audio of your music. So what I'll do, because the 
speaker is static in the scene, we'll also be using the same technique but in a slightly different way in the next video. But because the speaker is static, I'm going to add a new empty. Okay, so I'll select this, Shift S, cursor to selected. That's because I have extras disabled, yeah. Shift S, cursor to selected, then I'll place an empty. And then I want to tie the displacement texture in our, in our speaker modifier. I want to tie that to this empty so that when we move around the empty, it also moves the texture. And that gives the, creates the, is, is the variable we'll be playing with to introduce animation in our speaker. So I'll just select the speaker and then under coordinates, instead of local, I'll say object, and then I'll select this empty as our object. So if I now select that empty and move it around, you'll see how it moves around the displacement texture, giving that uh, illusion of animation. So the next thing I want to do is create a constant animation on this empty. So under the animation tab, I will go move here and then let's set enable extra so that we can see our empty. I'm going to place a keyframe in the, what's this, the X axis of our object. So I'll place a keyframe and then under the animation modifiers inside the graph editor, I will add a modifier and set the generator. And this just introduces a formula that creates this curve on the, on the variable that you're animating. So if I play around with this, you'll see it, it adjusts the steepness of, of the slope. So if I just play this, you'll see how that looks and I think I'd like it to be a bit more aggressive so I'll I'll make the slope a bit steeper and I think I like that so this will be the animation that will constantly underlie the mesh and then the next thing we'll do is introduce that syncing we'll play around with the strength to just to control when the displacement is being seen and when it isn't. So I'll make sure this playhead is back at the first frame, which is frame zero. And then I'll, inside our modifier, I'll make sure I have a keyframe. I'll try and place that keyframe at frame zero. First of all, before I even animate, uh, place any keyframes, I want to see what levels do I want this? Because beyond a certain level, either to the negative side or to the positive side, it, it starts looking, um, it crosses some boundaries. So I want to just play around and see what's the maximum and the minimum number that I would like this frame to be. And I think for me, just about 0.8, uh, negative 0 0.8 and and 0 0.07, those are the values that I'll be playing with. Let me just write them down before I forget. Now that I know the range within which I want the value of strength to dance between, I'll make sure my playhead is at the first frame and I'll place a keyframe on the value of strength. I'll then go to channel and then bake sound to F curves. And this will just take values from the audio that you're using and bake those values into the animation curves. And you'll see you have a few options on the right. And the ones I'll play with are the lowest and highest frequencies. Because I want the speakers to react to the, the bass, the really low frequencies, I've set um, uh, the range of the frequency to be between 0 and 150. This covers like uh, the ideal range that I want. And then I'll select the audio I want to use, which is this one, and hit Bake Sound to F curves. And if we play, we'll see what that does. If we zoom in, you'll see that 
exactly the signals in your audio have been engraved into the animation curves and this this is what that kind of look like looks like Now, at any time, you could always go back into your object and go into the texture and adjust settings over here to just change the look of your whole effect. The smaller the texture, the more the detail that appears, the larger the texture. So you can just play around with that to get different sorts of effects. Now, you can tell just by looking at my curve that my audio has some sort of fading effect. That's why you see the strength of the curve uh, is kind of on a slope here. But what if you don't really want that? You're not really stuck to the initial curves that you're given after you've done the baking. You have other options here under the modifiers that can kind of give you a bit more control even after the fact. So what I usually like to do is add an envelope and this just gives me more options to stretch out my curve uh, beyond the points that I have. So if I just add a control point, you'll see what all these options do. This moves my curve up and down. This stretches out my curve from the roughly the highest point on the curve. This one does the same but from below the curve. And then you see all these options and all the how they manipulate the curve. And you may have to play around to really see exactly uh, to get the feel of our uh, intuitive feel of how it does. You may have to experiment a lot with this. But this is just to show you that you're not married to that initial uh, curve that you get after you've done the baking. And something else I also like to do is after I've added all the modifiers that I I want to add, I'll usually end with the limits. And what this one does is it creates like a hard cap on the boundaries of the values that you want on your animated value. So let's say in the previous one, I wanted um, my values were negative 0 0.8 and 0 0.07, if I remember correctly. So on the maximum and minimum Y values, the maximum is 0 0.07. Wait, the minimum was negative 0 0.8. The maximum was 0 0.07. And you can stretch that out. And you'll see what that does is it creates a hard cap between the our highest bounds and our lower bounds on our animated values. So if you move this around, you'll see the minimum value cap and the maximum value cap. And even after you've set your bounds wherever you want, you, you still have the freedom on the, all these other modifiers above to go back in there and just kind of stretch out your curve. So this is just to show you you're not you're not stuck with the values you get after you bake you can play around with the modifiers to really tune uh, hone in on what you want with your animation so i'm just going to play around with this for a few minutes until i have something that i want now one last thing i'm going to do here is the texture that i'm using inside this object in our displacement modifier for the speaker so I'll come here, inside the texture. I'm going to set the color to, from grayscale to color, so that we have a bit of variation in the color. And then I'll go back into the modifier, and in the direction, I'll hit RGB to XYZ. So it just kind of tells the mesh, it displaces the mesh in the X, Y, and Z direction just based on the texture. So initially, you'll see it's kind of doing that displacement, but 
when we set this to RGB to XYZ, you'll see that it's being displaced in a lot more directions, which just makes it look a lot more dynamic and alive. And I think that neat trick just saves a lot of work and adds a lot of variation in the animation. And then the last thing you'll want to do before you hit render is make sure that you have your motion blur checked. And this just smoothens the whole animation and just adds that cherry on top and makes it look really, really nice. So when you're done, hopefully you'll have something that looks like this. <laughs>